F1 Podcast wishes to advise that the following episode contains coarse language and adult themes. Hi guys, welcome back to F1 Podcast. Um, Pet, we move on to the contentious issue, the issue I think that's been burning up more word processes this week uh, in Formula 1 than at any other time in the, in the sports history. Uh, we're talking here about the uh, the potential of a breakaway series uh, run by FOTA uh, as opposed to the FIA, and uh, it's been fascinating reading over the last uh, over the last little while now. And there's the real potential uh, for the power of Formula One to effectively be wrested away from the FIA, uh, i.e., Bernie and Max. Mm. Uh, mate, what are your uh, what are your thoughts on on what's been going on in particular over the last week? Um, in in Formula One. Well, first up, I I love the fact that the deadline was Friday and Photo made their announcement on <coughs> Thursday, a day before the deadline, basically saying, "Fuck you, we are going to do this. We are not happy, and we're going to show our our hand. We're going to not wait for the deadline. This is what we're planning to do." And when I first heard that announcement, I was I was really happy, Max. I was like. I was stoked. And, and the reason is, is because I just thought, well, you know, as we've discussed off camera, Max, um, they were basically saying, we're serious about this. We're not joking around here. We're not uh, threatening and, and, and making sort of false claims. We are going to do this if you don't do something about these regulations and these governance issues that they've been concerned about, budget caps and things like that. So really, really happy with Concept Max. Think it's great. Happy that they announced it a, a day early. And I'm looking forward to it, mate. I, I can't wait for them to do this. Uh, if there's no last-minute compromise or if nothing changes, I'm looking forward to a, to a photo championship. I say, fuck you, Bernie. Fuck you, Mosley. Um, I thought you were going to say, fuck you, Max, then. I was going to say, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want this to happen. I really want this to happen, Max. It's time. I, I didn't think it would happen this quickly, uh, but it's time for Bernie and Max to, uh, to, to go. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with you, mate. Uh, about 150%, if that's at all possible. Uh, they called Max's bluff, mm. which I really like. Um, they've said, fuck you. You put a, uh, a really small sort of time frame within which we have to make all of these decisions in, which is clearly what Mosley did to try and force their hand. Well, you got what you want, you prick. You forced their hand, and they've said, fuck you. And I really am 100 million percent behind Foda. Now, of course, we've got to work, you know, they've got to work out logistics of a new championship and all that sort of thing. But when you think about it, let's look at the basics, right? You've got eight teams, eight photo teams, and let's face it, they're, they're the big guns of Formula One that give all these pricks in the, uh, in the FIA their, uh, their money and give Bernie their money. And prestige. All of that. Yeah. 100% right. Now, you know, your, your, your BMWs, your Red Bulls, your Ferraris, your McLarens, your et al., uh, have all said, no, nah, we don't want to play by these rules anymore. We don't want to get half of the uh, television rights money anymore. I mean, that's always been the biggest uh, you know, point of contention. We've made our own cost-cutting measures over the years. Still not good enough for you guys. Um, so we've got the teams on side, like the major teams, which will instantly attract sponsorship dollars. Tell me there's not a television station out there that won't go, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Our opportunity to, uh, to, to televise um, open-wheeler cars of the ilk of Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes, Renault, Toyota, etc. Yeah. Oh, hello ITV. Remember you lost the rights? That's right. You might want to stick your hand yeah. up for a bit of that. TV but stations. Let's look at the circuits. circuits. Let's look at the circuits. Yeah. Man, you call. Welcome back. Canada. Welcome back. Indianapolis. Welcome back. Adelaide, I dare say. Come on, Adelaide. <laughs> Punch above <laughs> your weight. Come on, Adelaide. Let's go, baby. But all of these great circuits that, love it. that have effectively been frozen out of Formula One by nothing more than sheer and utter greed. Yeah, and arrogance. And arrogance, yeah. Absolute arrogance on the part of, of the FIA and also FOM. Yep. Um, they're talking about suing now. Good luck. Bring, bring in the lawyers. That's fine. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> just because a, a, a championship or a motor racing series isn't sanctioned by the FIA doesn't make, mean it's any less relevant. It doesn't awesome. mean it's going to be any less popular. Absolutely. And folks have already said that they're going to engage you and I, the, the fans, uh, much more. They're going to 
engage you know the community much more and that's what yeah. needs to happen they want a transparent series with one set of rules okay that sort of thing and the rumor has it and i'm not in the least bit surprised that uh photo is a uh, as a group have effectively been working on a breakaway series since march this year i would suggest that has probably been going a little bit longer than that uh, but that's something that came to light recently that these guys haven't all of a sudden and i mean this is obvious it's not a knee-jerk reaction from photo. No, it's not, no. Uh, when you've got the clout of these major manufacturers turning around and saying, you know what, we don't want to play by your draconian rules anymore, um, you've got to sit up and take notice uh, at the end of the day. How many times have you guys heard over the, however long you've been watching Formula One, is that it's all about keeping the fans on side. The fans pay the salaries. It's If we didn't have the fans, there would be no more Formula One. Mm. Well... I think it's wonderful that for the first time in a long time we have a uh, an, an, an organisation that's turning around and saying, you know what, we're getting fucked over, yeah. the fans are getting fucked over, and we're going to try and do something about that. Yeah, and let's get rid of it's these great. draconian rules as well on things like the Concord Agreement, which is a secret, do supposedly a secret document, and you know all of these you know back backroom deals between these old fucks, Bernie and. and and Max, I mean, let's just get into a, a new era of, of Grand Prix racing, whatever you call it. And, um, you know, I, I understand that these things take a lot of organisation, that, you know, Bernie was rabbiting on about the fact that, you know, oh, they're going to have to deal with a whole, lot of, a whole lot of other issues. I'm not sure how many employees FOM has, but, you know, I reckon you could probably get away with, I don't know, 20, 30 people to negotiate with TV companies, circuits sign up a five-year deal. I mean, you don't need hundreds and hundreds of people to facilitate this sort of stuff. And like we've just said, Max, I mean, people are going to be chanting at the bit to get access to this new series. And uh, I just don't think it's going to be, you know, any any business, there's, there's a lot of talent in Formula 1 at the moment. There's a lot of people who will put their hand up and say, yes, I'd like to be involved in this. They can negotiate with the circuits. They can negotiate with the uh, with the the different countries and get the TV rights and things like that. Do we need Bernie Ecclestone to do that? Fuck no, we don't. Well, this is, this is right. I mean, for you you guys that follow football, it's like FIFA turning around every couple of years and saying, well, okay, next year a goal is worth two points. Um, the offside rule is going to be changed so you can't have more than five guys forward. Um, yeah, and like yeah. it or lump it. And, and there's going to be two goalkeepers uh, now. <laughs> and uh, what? That's what Formula One's had to do. And you look at Mosley and, and, you know, under the auspices of cost-cutting, oh, fuck, let's introduce curves. Something that's going to cost millions of pounds in development yeah. for every team that isn't actually proven yet to make too much of a fucking difference. Let's try and change rules every six months or every few months and, and do it at the last minute as well for the next season. It's BMW ridiculous. have just announced, fuck it, because we're not, we're not using it anymore this season. It's a piece of shit. Uh, adds too much weight to our car. We're not getting any benefit out of it. We're gone. Uh, McLaren aren't using it uh, this weekend no. uh, as well. Ferrari will be the only Kurs car on the grid this weekend. I mean, but the sheer, yeah, it sounds good, so, you know, recovering and, you know, earth is green and all that bullshit, that's fine. We're talking motorsport here, and every time you touch something, the cost involved goes down to the teams, and, you know, we're talking yeah. about limiting budgets, and that's the thing that's really pissed me off about Formula One over the last however many years. Constant rule changes. Let's get a set of rules in place, okay, let's do that. And if there's a rule that needs to be changed in future, let's get some. Let's do something fucking strange and consult the teams involved mm. that have to do the spend. Let's get them on board and ask them if we can do that for minimal cost, yeah. rather than arbitrarily saying you will do this, you will do that. It's fucking me off. So I hope photo get up. <laughs> So let us know your comments, and uh, we'll see you soon for the next video. All right, guys, enjoy Silverstone. See, see you guys. guys. Bye. Bye.